All right, it is Monday. Yay. It's another week. And welcome to the Sunshine State Happy Hour, powered by FloridaBeerBlog.com and the Florida Beer Podcast. This is Dave, your host and author, as with me as always is Steve. Hi, Steve. Hey, Dave. Hi. And I'm very, very excited about today's guest because I've been watching her for quite a long time. If you are not following her on the face gram, whatever, you really should. Uh, she is an author, advanced Cicerone, who is studying for the master exam. She was named one of the top 40, under 40 tastemakers of 2016 on Wine Enthusiast, which is great. And we just want to welcome to the show, M. Sauter. How are you doing? How is Connecticut? Things are good in Connecticut. We're, uh, you know, we're, we've been under the shelter in place now. We, we take cues on what New York does so whatever that because we're very close to new york we i only live about an hour and 45 minutes from new york city we live equidistant between boston and new york uh near hartford so we take oh, okay. the, yeah the governor takes cues from the you know governor cuomo and uh the tri-state area so mm -hmm. we've been under kind of those um lockdown whatever new york city does we do um but you know we've been at home my husband and i and we have a, a beautiful cat together um so we're just hanging out with the cat living life i'm getting a lot of drawing done going to work still <laughs> as an essential employee of a small brewery um and hanging out that would that would be two roads we should probably give credit where credit no i don't work at two roads. i don't awesome. uh, oh, i don't yeah. I don't oh, work I apologize. Uh, I haven't worked there. I did work there for five and a half years as their head of oh, nice. and public relations. Uh, sorry, my clock's about to chime. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. uh, it's two minutes fast. We'll fix that. Um, <laughs> or too much slow, excuse me. Um, so I work at Fox Farm Brewery in Salem, Connecticut. Uh, it's a small farm brewery that started about three years ago. And uh, I do kind of help out in any capacity. I really work there about 20 hours a week. Uh, I left Two Roads uh, two years ago to study for the Master Cicerone exam. Uh, okay. And then studied and then met the owner of Fox Farm. And he was like, hey, do you want like a small part-time job while you're studying? And he really, his beer is phenomenal. Really? I know she all right. So yeah, I, lost yeah, I guess yeah, that's just fine. I guess give us a little taste of uh of them. There's so many things that I have to talk to you about because there's so many things that you do and I'm almost incredibly jealous of you. But let's let's chat a little bit about the brewery and uh, what you can kind of expect for people that go up to Connecticut to visit. I think she muted her mic. Uh oh. Oh, big, I figured it out. Oh. I don't know what happened, but I'm back. Hey, and we're back. That. Yay. Yeah, so that, hey. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, that's Fox Farm. It's an old dairy barn uh, that was built in the 60s. It had a bunch of people, with cows lived in there and whatnot. Um, and now uh, the owner is the guy, Zach, and his brother, Dave. Um, Zach's the brewer. Dave handles all the front of house stuff. Uh, it's super small. There's only about eight people that work there total. Uh, we do it all from New England style IPAs. We really focus on loggers. Uh, we have two horizontal loggering tanks. Right now we're loggering a lot just to kind of tie up the tank. Uh -huh. um, but we're coming out with new beers despite the, um, despite the pandemic. Uh, we are very uniquely positioned that the brewery is surrounded by a ring road. And okay. so you can drive around it. And so we have created a really easy drive through portal. So people don't even have to get out of their cars. They buy it all online, pull up. They say their name through like the window. They'll show us their ID. We grab it. They pop their trunk. We close their trunk. They drive away. See. Nice. That's, that's, that's great to see. And yeah. I, I, so Gerard from, uh, Hi, Gerard. <laughs> from up in your wiki <laughs> watchy, uh, yeah. beer in Florida wants to know when you're coming to Florida. And this is over. I'm, I'm coming to Florida. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And you know something, what you need to do is you've got a, uh, a smoked Hellas and you need to, to bring some of that because bring some for trade. Yeah. A, a trade. 
<laughs> Dave does not trade. Dave drinks. I, Dave never drink. trades. It's fine. I'm here to drink. So, so what are we drinking? Let's let's just go quickly around, uh, and I guess we'll start with you so that you can educate us all. And I'm just yeah. So, so this jealous. is uh, Folks Beer, which is a lager centric brewery out of Brooklyn. Uh, this is their Echo Tone. It's actually a collaboration with Fox Farm. Uh, we brewed. Um, they came up, we brewed a Brett inspired lager with them that tasted like a Dead Ringer 4 or Vol, actually. It was phenomenal. Oh, wow. Uh, and then they went to the brewers. So there's three brewers Zach, the owner, Mike Webster, who used to work at Treehouse, and then Dan Comstock, who was the brewer at DeGarde in Oregon. Uh, and now he brews at Fox Farm. So the three of them went down to and brewed this just like classic rustic lager called Echotone. And I was in Brooklyn about a month ago, like right, like a couple of days before this all went down. And I met the owners of Fav Folks Beer and they gave me a bunch of Echotone because all my coworkers drank it without giving me a can because I was away. <laughs> so they were like, I didn't get, yeah. Uh, but it's delicious. Nice. So yeah, we make really great lagers. We have our, we just released Cottage. Cottage is our Hellas and it's, I just actually just drank one before. This. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, I, I love the cottage. It's a great part of the like logger lineup that we do. It's really really good. So nice. I, and it's funny that you mentioned that. I, I've seen loggers seem to be just rocketing back with a vengeance. It's Yay! Just, it's kind of thing <laughs> I know you're so excited. Yay! Yeah. I mean, I love them. But it's just, it's interesting to see, and it's interesting to see how small breweries are sort of getting around the time issue with, you know, whatever they can do. So yeah. that we're, you know, lagering in recipe, maybe not in tradition, so. Yeah, but a lot of small breweries, like uh, Folks Beer does their Pilsner for 60 days, their Hellas is 90, mm -hmm. you know, 68 days for their Schwartz beer. Uh, we're incredibly laser focused on traditional like we have the horizontal tanks they stay in the tank for six weeks nice. um so yeah we're we're particular about staying true to tradition our we have mm. a lucre style side pull uh check uh -huh. side pull so when we do check beers we do we do an amber a lot a dark and a regular like check pilsner and we pour it off the side pole and you get the milk pour at the end of the day and it's all foam and it's, oh, mm. it's so good. So yeah, I'm a big That's like awesome. lager. I'm obsessed with lagers. My husband's also, he's a, he's a big crispy boy. I just taught him that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that where he really enjoyed that. So we, nice. our fridge is full of either, you know, lagers or dr we call them drinking beers. Um, uh -huh. And we're like, and we're also like a big Miller Lite household as well or okay. High Life. So there's just always a bunch of like High Life and then loggers and yeah, so. It's, it's kind of a little difference between the two. It's, yeah. not, it's amazing. Well, I know that Steve can really only handle uh, pastry stouts if they have lots of lactose and vanilla and whatever other pastry has been thrown in. So Steve, what are you drinking right now? Right now it's a salty flamingo from uh, Saltwater. That's their kettle <laughs> cooked sour. It's uh, pretty Good hibiscus and Himalayan sea salt it is delicious, and I'm glad I have probably I don't know half a crowler left. Nice, nice. It's funny the last time what I was drinking, there. Dave? What am I? Well, hold on, I'm going into my E6 PR. Oh, you have story. a story. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I don't have a story. I just have a four pack of their new edible um, can rings in the front of my car. I should probably leave that. One of these days, I'll, I'll eat it. I'll actually try to eat it. And apparently, you can. Eat on the stream would be fun. That might happen. <laughs> that might happen. And uh, I'm actually, I got this in a box some time ago. It just kind of felt like something clean. So I went for an Oaktown Brown Ale from a Cali Craft Brewing. One of those, uh, somebody got er, somebody got it for me. You know, just kind of a sampler of California beers. I'm like, okay, works for me. Because right. I'll tell you something, I love a good Brown Ale. Almost nobody else does. I feel that it is an art form that once it dies out, it will be missed, but people aren't doing enough to save it. We make a Fox Farm makes a great American brown ale called Scatter. Oh, okay, I expect the box on my porch next week. We got it. <laughs> I'm just saying. We have, we have it in cans right now. 
It's a, you, you know, once it's we a get slow, off, we'll, we'll yeah. chat. Okay. Yeah. It's a slower mover, but you know, <laughs> obvious. but I, it's, people really, really like it. And it's a great, like it almost borders on like a porter. It's a very like robust brown ale, but it's mm -hmm. excellent. Nice. So the thing that you are known well for, and I love it because it's both informative and just an absolute delight to actually see is if you actually follow her on pints and panels you can see all of her illustrations that come out on a regular basis kind of like what you said um some of them describe a specific style and i wish i could get these in like a poster or a book or something you can get them great. in a poster I so you can't get yeah i have a oh, store okay. on my website pintsandpanels.com and i sell them i don't sell them in like a poster i get them like eight, eight by ten so you can get them in like an art print okay and it's like 10 10 bucks you can also do cards if you're studying oh nice yeah four by six cards and you order them individually um i've been better at updating my site so people can get uh -huh. like art prints because i do every tuesday i do beers i'm glad exist so beer i've had like the firestone pivo yeah pivo oh i love pivo <laughs> um, I'm a crispy gal. What can I say? So um, I'm waiting for the Italian, the Italian, um, the Tipo, pills. Like Tipo pills. Starting to really show up. Yeah. Yeah. They've been, there. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I absolutely love, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I'm just, I was saying how much I like the Italian. No, I was just Italian. saying, I, <laughs> and I was just saying how much I absolutely love your your illustrations, and I can see that as you're going through your master Cicero and training, that creating these obviously is a great way to get the information out, but it's got to be a great way to help you continue to retain the information for the exam. Yeah, I'm a very visual learner. Um, I find that when things are either like on video or I can draw them, I really I feel like I, like I can read a book, but I don't know if I'm gonna ever like really retain the knowledge, even if I read the book multiple times. So studying these uh, and working on the, I mean, the visual master Cicerone, I just drew 40, number 42, and I'm only on page eight of 32 pages of the syllabus. So this thing's gonna oh be gosh. hundreds of comics. Um, the exam is supposed to take place in about five months. I'm skeptical that they'll have the exam this year. Mm -hmm. just because I don't know if I've got, I know at least three people from the United Kingdom are supposed to come over to take the exam. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know how they're going to put 24 people in a room to take it. It just seems um, not in Chicago because that's where it's, it's supposed to be October 20th. Well, they, there's enough ballrooms. They can just go to the Palmer house. They've got a big enough room. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, yeah, they could move it where if we all separate, but like with travel and whatnot, if people, I, I'm just, who knows, who knows? So, but this has been a great way to like stay on task and study. Um, oh yeah. And so. it, there's, there's enough like additional little things. Um, your cat definitely, I, I think this should be a shirt. Oh yeah. I, I just, guess. that is my cat. That's Milbo. Uh, Milbo. Milbo. Nice. Yep. Milbo, we got her on Craigslist on Easter Sunday. So her birthday is Easter Sunday. So her birthday changes oh, every year. She that's funny. <laughs> um, um, yeah, we got her about five years ago. And like a woman found her under her house during a, like, a really cold night in like a really terrible part of Waterbury, Connecticut, which is kind of a uh -huh. like, old factory town. And she put her on Craigslist and was like, I can't keep this cat. I'm moving. It's really nice. Does anyone want it? My husband and I were like, we want a cat. And she is the nicest, sweetest. Right now she's laying in the sun. Oh, um, of course. Yeah, she's a great cat. Um, I don't know. We thought that she's got like a lot of distance issues. Like she doesn't like to be left alone. Uh -huh. and we thought that like we would, if we had, we were here all the time though. We thought that she'd really like that. But she's been swiping at me a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> Which is not something she normally does. Um, because she's like, what are you, you're supposed to be not here. Or like my husband yeah. at work at night, like, why are you still here? And she's just gotten to like, kind of like, give me room, give me space. Um, so. yeah, our, it's funny, our cat is sort of the opposite way. It looks like JDM wants, a du wants the Duvel illustration on the t-shirt. I don't know if I you have t-shirts. I don't have shirts, but I've been looking into like having doing one off shirts for people who want them. I get emails from people like, oh, you should do this or this. And, you know, 
I found a really great drop shipper for my art that, uh -huh. that mails it all out. It's really, the, the quality is super high. Um, but maybe I'll look in the shirts because the Duval, I love that Duval drawing. Um, and I'm, that's my favorite glass, the, uh, that like the Duval, like round. We have them in this really small ones and we have the really like ostentatious large one where you look like mm -hmm. a weirdo when you drink out of it. I love that, <laughs> I love that glass. It's a great, great glass. Um, so yeah. So, so you have obviously gone through the first couple levels of Cicerone training. It's something that I've always thought of, but it's a very large investment in time and money and brain power and ability. Is it something that everybody really needs to do if they really want to be able to appreciate beer? Or who do you think it's really aimed at? I don't think you have to take it. I really like Gerard. I'll get you a shirt. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I really, I really like the sister. Like they're very passionate people. Everyone who works there is so committed to beer and styles and all that stuff. Like they are just really passionate people. They're friends of mine. I really enjoy what they do. Um, you know, taking the level one, the thing, um, anyone who works in beer is trying to like, oh, I want to get into beer and work in beer. How do I do it? I always recommend level one. It's 68 $69 or $79. It's online. You can do it at home. Um, it's just a great way to like have some extra beer knowledge. Um, if you want to take the level two or three or even the master, um, you know, you can, but it's not requiring it. Mean, I really like, I tell people when people are like, Oh, how do I get into beer? What do I do? I tell people to drink responsibly. Okay. And I tell people to, uh, I really like taking beer by Randy Mosier. <laughs> Uh, they formulated formulated the second edition of his book for the Cicer the certified Cicerone exam. So it's really a great textbook and it's not expensive uh, and it's a great beer book. I've, I was actually flipping through my copy this morning um, just to make sure I was getting some information right on something. It's just an excellent resource. And then my second thing is if you want to learn off flavors, go to a bad brewery and just drink bad beer and go and, and be like, okay, well, why does this taste like this? And then if you kind of know what how it's not supposed to taste, I think you'll respect beer more when you get a beer that is good. Um, and that's a great uh, way to try off flavors. And there are a lot of bad breweries out there. Um, so when it's all over, go to a bad brewery. <laughs> unfortunately, you're right. Yeah. This is the book that you're talking about, right? Yes. Uh, get the second edition. So that second edition. Right, the second edition is the one with his picture at the top. Okay, uh, so this one. one. Yeah. Because I think I have the first edition. Um, the first edition is great too, but they added so the if you're taking the level two or three or the master cicerone exam, um, you have to learn the beer. They go off the beer judge certification uh, program and their okay. gu style guidelines. Um, the app for that is free, so if you want to read style guidelines on the BJCP, you can download the app. But the okay. first book I think goes through 2008 guidelines. And the newest book is 2015 guidelines, and that's gotcha. what we use. So um, okay. it's just a really great, great beer book. I, nice. I, my copy. I have both the first edition and the second edition, and both mm -hmm. copies are just like destroyed because I've read yeah. them and underlined them <laughs> so many times. I just and it's just a really great beer book. Well, we should also talk about other great beer books. This one, uh, beer is for everyone of drinking hey. age. That is you. That's, that my, is that's your me. book. Mm -hmm. um, how, how was the? What was the? Um, I guess what is the book about? Well, who is it really geared towards? I would assume that it's kind of the entry level before you go on to Randy's things. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a super beer one hundred and one. I focus on a lot of beers you can get at your grocery store or beers you can get that are easy that are nationally available. Um, there are 32 states represented in the book. Um, so our 32 beers represented in the book yet. So 32 beers from 32 states. God, I had like half a beer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but they like it. I wanted to highlight all the different beers um, from around the country that are really easy to get. Um, it's separated into like what, you know, multi beers, what makes a malt beer multi, hoppy beers. Uh, there's a whale watching section with rare beers. Um, there's a sour section. There's mm. proper glassware. It's very beer 101, 100% illustrated. Um, I drew it over six months where I would draw in the morning, go to work, and then I would come home and I would clean up. I do all my work 
is pen and ink on paper, and then I digitally oh, wow. I digitally add um, color and clean everything up that way. So nice. it's like kind of a twofold process. So everything is so when it was over, I had this like huge stack of sketchbooks of the book, and they came out a couple years ago, and people really liked it. Um, it's been a really fun thing to do, and maybe one day I'll get to do it again. Who knows? Uh, but I've been really enjoying doing all the visual beer education stuff that I started doing in January. The beer mm -hmm. style simple with styles, uh, ale well, all that stuff. Well, how did you get started doing all of that? Because I know that you have a degree in um, illustration, okay. illustrative arts, I think, right? You have an MFA in cartooning, which is a real thing. <laughs> uh, from the Center for Cartoon Studies in White River Junction, Vermont. I went there, I graduated with an MFA in 2011. Uh -huh. uh, and I started Pints and Panels, actually. This is my 10th anniversary. Uh, my first- Congratulations. Yeah, it's, I wanted to do a big tour and obviously that's not gonna happen. No. Uh, well, maybe we'll, pu we'll put it on hold. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, my first, I reviewed beer. So it was a beer review comic for the first nine years, essentially, where I would- Oh, wow. Yeah, and I did it, uh, when it started, I did it every day. Uh, and I lived in Vermont at the time, so I was drinking some really great beers, and I had a great beer store near my um, house. And then I moved to Oregon and worked in a beer store in Eugene, Oregon for a year before I got my job at Two Roads. And so um, I was reviewing beer, uh, mostly positive, some negatively, and then I kind of stopped doing the negative part because, like, why do you need to highlight bad beer when there's so much great beer out there? And I did yeah. that in I wanted to do something more and so I started to like doodle style guidelines and I would post them on Twitter and people really liked them and I was like well this is it I got it so I changed you know beer reviews to doing more visual what I call visual beer education and yeah everything and there's new content now every day um, because of the pandemic people are at home they're studying mm -hmm. they want to learn more um, so yeah there it used to be every weekday there was new content now there's every every weekends as well so Yeah. yeah, I know the feeling, unfortunately. Yeah. So let's put you let's put you on the spot because um, I'm always asked this question personally. Um, if somebody's going to Total Wine or Bevmo or a place like that, and they've got an empty six pack holder, and they're going to get six beers, just the six first beers you should try just to understand what beer truly is. What would you tell them? So I actually, I, styles are great. A lot of people don't adhere to styles, that's fine. Uh, but to really appreciate beer and to understand styles, uh, there are some really phenomenal beers out there. Um, my like when in doubt go Belgian, like Chimay White is uh, probably one of the most perfect beers. I just put in an online order for our local liquor store. Um, mm -hmm. Um, and I've my I was like a what's what of I basically just did this a couple hours ago because I was like what beers do I want to drink right now and it was like Anchor Steam I wanted an Anchor Steam because that's just especially when it's fresh it's hard to get fresh but fresh Anchor Steam is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, um, Ali Ash White is one is probably my favorite beer. People always are like what's your favorite beer and I'm just like Ali Ash White because Ali Ash White is now that they can it which is I'm all, it's just such a good, I love whip beers. But whip beer was my entry level beer when they, yeah, there it is, Allagash White. Um, I don't my like secret shame, I guess, of Miller Lite. I, I just really like Miller Lite, it's so good. <laughs> um, you know, um, what was I saying? There was my first beer ever that I loved was Sam Adams White Ale, which used to be their spring seasonal. Oh yeah. Uh, now that, yeah, that beer changed my life. Which I my book is right. dedicated to Allagash, uh, Al, Allagash. It's Sam Adams White Ale because oh, wow. I, I had it at a Super Bowl party, and I was like, "What? What is this?" And this is 2006, so it's Steeler Seahawks, and I have like a 25 ounce, you know, Sam Adams White Ale in front of me, and I take one sip, and I'm like, "I never tasted anything like this. I want to have more beer," and that's <laughs> that was it. I'm here right now talking to you guys because of Sam White Ale. <laughs> and they don't make it anymore. They make White Christmas. which They, they make do. White Christmas, yeah, they don't yeah. have White. Which is essentially, it's the same recipe, they just chain coriander instead of cinnamon, but it's still, it still right. tastes really good. <laughs> it's so good. 
Steve, uh, when you were when you were stationed on the Constitution, what is that one Sam Adams beer that you always had that you keep telling me that I'm going to be drinking when you take me to Boston, Boston Brick Red? Yeah, because you can't get it anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And we've emailed the brewery, we've emailed everybody trying to get that beer down here to anyone we can, and no one can get a hold of it. Yeah, it is the best red ale you'll find. Sam Adams is great. I mean, they just it's. One of my favorites. Yeah, Sam Adams Oktoberfest. I mean, that was my, like, that was our when my friend Sean and I wanted to be fancy when we were underage. We would get his brother to buy us Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Because <laughs> we were like, ooh, Sam Adams, you know, like, because we're 18 or 19. And so I just, that's, uh, I have a real soft spot for their seasonals. And mm. it's just a really great beer. So, yeah. So that's a good question, Steve. I don't actually know the answer to this for you, uh, Em. I know many people that are on the Allagash White train, so choo-choo all aboard. Um, But Steve, what was the beer that got you into craft beer? Into craft beer? Probably Boston Lager. Okay. That was probably the the start of my craft beer journey. (laughs) Uh, You you Because before that, it was all like High Life and Milwaukee's Beast and you know, the usual college beers. <laughs> yeah, I was we were working big, for Disney, yeah. so I needed to be cheap. We were big yeah. Yingling in college. We drank a lot of Yingling because I went to college. Yingling, can't go wrong Yingling. Yeah, so. I remember my undergrad years with St. Ives Special Brews, so that was before my craft beer days. Um, mm. That was not pretty, so. <laughs> All right, so I will leave you with this question that I've been asking everybody, and this will be interesting soon as you do work for a brewery, but in terms of some of the changes that people have had to make to stay alive during the whole epidemic that we're experiencing right now, once we go back to normal, once everything is resolved and taken care of, what is one change that you have seen that you really think needs to stay around? I actually really like the curbside pickup. I think it it's nice. It kind of yep. it it's easy, you know, it kind of gets rid of the line waiting mentality. Um I've seen there's a brewery in my town, Alvarium, phenomenal brewery. They do high weird high peanut butter pastry stuff, but then they uh-huh. also make a kick ass alt beer. Phenomenal, like um really good Hefeweizen, they, they can their Hefeweizen as well. Um, and the way that they solve the line problem now is they only release 20 cases a day of their like certain hype beer. So you gotta buy it immediately and then it like spreads it out. Um, Interesting. Yeah, it's been, I haven't gone to their brewery yet. It's on my to-do list of like small business, <laughs> we have a small business list of bre- like breweries and restaurants that we wanna support during this time. And they're on, definitely on there because their beer is awesome. Um, but I really love the just like if you got it curbside pickup ordering online. I know certain breweries do that before, but I just re- it's for ease. I think it's really really great, and I kind of hope that it sticks around. Uh, I haven't made it up to Tree Treehouse is about fifty five minutes from me. We don't normally do that drive, but they've been mm-hmm. doing all online stuff, and apparently it's really easy. Um, so you know you save a couple hours. Um, I'm not a big line waiter person. I don't. Really, yeah. I don't, I don't really wait in line for beer. I don't need to, or not. Not that I don't need to. I'm not like a VIP or whatever. But like. Yeah, but yeah. What do you? What you know? But those certain beers now, it's you could get them easier and you know save time. You don't have to like drag your family along. You don't have to mule your grandparents or whatever. Um, I just I really like the curbside pickup. I think we're going to be doing it for. A while, especially because, like, you know, when this is all over, like, some people are gonna, you know, aren't like, I don't want to like be close to people right now and I want to keep my distance. So, with tasting room yeah. two open, like, how do you keep the like, you know, I don't know, but I like the idea of curbside. I think it's really great if breweries can do it online ordering, it's so easy. Uh, I've been doing like ten dollars in tip like a week for like breweries that I really like that are far away from me that I want to support or I've been like buying beer and just like emailing Uh them afterwards and being like I don't live anywhere near you like can you give this away or put it the money in the tip jar (laughs) like keep up the good work so I've been doing that yeah it's been like trying to support local breweries because like tasting rooms are closed and a lot of people like I know firsthand like we 
a lot of us depend on tips for extra mm. money. So what can we do? Um, I've been drawing, I've been doing, um, you know, I do every Tuesday, I do the beers I'm glad exist. I've been doing commissions where for $40, I'll send you the JPEG of any beer you want me to draw. I drew, I've drawn growlers. I've drawn, you know, I drew a 2000 label of Sam Adams cherry wheat because that's the beer that person, you know, that was the beer that got them into craft beer, but they wanted gotcha. that label. And then I've been donating $10 yeah. from every um, drawing that I've done to direct relief for, so healthcare workers can get stuff they need. And then I also give me a little work on the side too. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been really great. I've raised over $130 so far. So, That's amazing. Yeah, that is incredible. incredible. And it's fun and, just to like draw whatever people want. You know, I'll do it. You name it, I draw it. Cool. And uh, if you're interested, you can go to her website, pintsandpanels.com. You can yep. find her online everywhere at Pints and Panels. M. Sauter, thank you so much for coming along. Hopefully you'll do well in your Master Cicerone exam. Uh, if you're, <laughs> fingers <laughs> crossed, if you're interested in more information from us, floridabeerblog.com, Florida Beer Podcast is wherever fine podcasts are found. Uh, join us tomorrow where we are going to be welcoming the Sanford Brew Crew. This one could get interesting because they, uh, <laughs> they drink they drink in the meantime stay safe keep your unwashed hands six feet apart from everybody else drink florida craft have a great rest of your day bye everybody cheers